Okay, welcome to another session of the juxtaposition, a lecture series um, at the University of Arts in Berlin. As part of the Studium Generale, um, a weekly format that I, Lukas Feireis, um, have started. Um, it is my intention to invite every week um, another cultural producer, an artist, a designer, a curator, a thinker, writer, a theater director from all around the world to um, talk about their often kind of hybrid and heterogeneous um, professional practice. And this uh, juxtaposition lecture series promotes a transdisciplinary discourse here at the Berlin University of the Arts, one that kind of uh, questions uh, established uh, etiquette and protocol. And today I'm excited to have artist, coder and designer Yiwon Song with us. Um, thank you so much for being here, Yiwon. Thank you so much for having me. How are you doing? Uh, I'm good. It's a bit late in Korea. I'm currently in Seoul, South Korea, and it's 2 a.m. in Korea, but like, otherwise everything is really good. Thank you, thank you even more so to be up in front of your screen. But I remember from our first conversation that you work a lot at night too, no? Yes, I work more internationally, so my working hour is a bit weird. And what are you working on at the moment? I'm working on a bunch of different websites. I'm trying to like make different um, experimental website, but also a practical website, so it can be used to for the users at the, um, not just an experimental form, but like work as a functioning website. So those are the things that I am focusing on. I work with my clients these days. Okay, okay. And the day was okay. The Monday started all right. Yes. Oh. So then um, before starting, um, uh, let me briefly introduce you to our audience and you know, the students uh, today. Um, you, with a background in graphic design, you have been expanding the spectrum of what, um, I don't know, web design and web art is. And um, by consistently challenging the notion of uh, yeah, user friendliness, um, and you've been creating some of the most complex and joyful, playful and difficult websites um, I have ever seen. And doing this all by yourself um, in the process of making these website, um, you have taken creative coding to a whole nother level for me. You have literally kind of established programming or coding as a contemporary artistic practice. So you seem to want nothing less than to Kind of radically change the way how people think about the the web. So um, I'm thrilled and it's with great pleasure that I welcome you here as part of the juxtaposition lecture series, Yvon. Um, maybe before you um, start with your presentation, you prepared a little presentation of maybe 30 minutes for us. Um, we um, start with a few questions to warm up and also kind of get to know you a little bit better. Um, as I said, your uh, approach to web design is rather um, special. So while, whilst the majority of kind of websites today, mine included, by the way, <laughs> but totally included, kind of, kind of look the same or at least follow similar kind of templates, your approach yeah. totally breaks with this, no? So, yeah. um, could you kind of for, for the students that are maybe not familiar with coding or programming or even with your work, um, how would you describe your um, your approach? Um, yeah, so as you described, I tried to change the template based websites and trying to like make more ex experimental websites that started from my notion that why is those websites should be should look the same and why do we too much consider about like a user friendliness and user experience and why all those kind of like concept is very much focused on the ease of use rather than like the content that it contains like as as my background is graphic design, I 
like deal with lots of content when I'm designing a book or a poster. But when it comes to website, then people stop think about the content that it contains and they will be focused on the user and the ease of use. And I think that is kind of like a weird approach. And I wanted to like change um this environment. That was like a very beginning that I started to like work on this um experimental website stuff. And then I figured out like um, there has been lots of experimental website before, like back in nineties, before these uh, large search engines such as Google's, and like, like all this environment has been changed, and like people just followed it because of the gap between developer and um, like user, and like all this environment was very interesting. I, I kind of feel like there should be some someone who tried to like ask questions and be more experimental when we are dealing with the web design. And I think that maybe I can do that. Yeah. So like yeah. that. So you feel that like this like oversimplification of like templated or user centric websites is almost selling people short in a way like that it's turning the yeah. internet to a kind of a uniform place. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think the internet is the place that many people from many different backgrounds and many different cultures use it at the same time. But those um, template-based website oversimplifies the users, uh, each of users' um, characteristic and their like way they use the tool and their culture, which affects the way people use those uh, internet and uh, web browsers and tools. Um, they just oversimplify to the users and like kind of like force them to use this direction rather than like think about how they what kind of culture do they have and how can we kind of like develop the space for the people from all different cultures mm. <laughs> almost feels like you are kind of um bringing back a notion from the very beginning of the internet no like back into yeah. your practice yeah right so maybe and this is a good point for, for you kind of to share a little bit um, some of your work um, with, with all of us uh, to then kind of jump back into more questions. Uh, but it's always easier to have uh, some visuals um, to, to refer to. Cool. So I will start sharing my screen. I have like a... Where's my key? I have like a keynote and um but I will show the website in Chrome browser. Some of them are not archived perfectly, so I'm not able to like approach the website right now, but like some of them are perfectly approachable. So I will like move back and forth. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, but like this will be more like a conversation. So like if you have any questions or like if you want to like interrupt me, please do, do that. Sweet. So as I mentioned, I thought like, oh, I started as a web designer. My background is graphic designer. So I started to design the website and I kind of start to think that this, those like template based website are a bit weird and maybe um, maybe I can change this. Like if you look at the term a user friendly in the internet, it says like if something especially something related to the computer is user friendly, it is simple for people to use. So as I mentioned, all those like a user friendly or web design is very much uh, focused on the ease of use and how to make people like use uh, straightforward um, and make it simple so the user can use it fast as possible. So I was looking at this um, template-based website and also like as a user, I use it lots of like, like an SNS or those platform. And I started to feel like, is this really for the users or is this for the advertiser, for example, or like, do we really want this? So like that was a very beginning of my question that I maybe I need to like expand the spectrum of the web design. Because I think like this website, template based website, or this like a super fast web um, site and straightforward web design is not something what, that we ask. So, like, I, I love this um, quote technology is the answer, but what was the question? So, I that this is the thing that the vibe that I felt 
when I'm whenever I use those um template based website, this web design is not something that I will ask, but like they kind of like forces us like as if they are um making a website for the users, but that is not real exactly what I was looking for. So I started to like work on this um project called anti user friendly. Um, this was the um the the like description that I wrote at the very beginning. The concept of user friendliness focuses on the ease of use of all us. It asks as little for of user as possible in order to achieve this. Most websites use standardized design and interface conventions that don't require the user to learn how to use the new interface. Instead, users repeat the behavior they, they've been trained to do. This automatic repetition of action causes people to lose their content awareness. So like as a like a like a performance or a, like an activity, I try to like make some sort of like a um non-functioning but more like a sculpture that represents the anti-user friendly, which is intentionally like um question the template user friendly based website and kind of like like make people that we think about the web design. Mm -hmm. In anti-user friendly, I construct hard to use devices and interface interfaces in order to challenge the notion of user friendliness and bring back the content awareness um so what like for example content awareness if i may ask you and so um i think those like a template based website for example whenever i'm using the instagram at one point i kind of like lose those content awareness and i i just scroll down and see the content that they expose us to like look at and i those kind of like ease of use forces users to keep watching and keep using the tool rather than like before they think and before they like go and search for the content that they were looking for looking for. And I think that like those like a simple and straightforward uh, interfaces forces users to like just keep watching the YouTube video and that ended up like showing the content that they didn't really intentionally um trying to watch, but like just just those like an autoplay kind of like recommended me to watch. So like I think that like maybe like we need to make some barriers when we are using these uh, tools so then user can aware before they like look at those autoplay videos, for example. So those are the very beginning. At the very beginning, I tried to like, it was more like a performance, I guess, um, trying to like show how can we use these uh, tools in a different way and how can I kind of like, um, let users to like, rethink about what, what they are using and how can website be different. And I also think that this concept of like responsive website, you know, like the website need to keep the same design, even though user enter the website using different devices or different screen ratio is quite um, weird. Cause like, for example, if I use my mobile device and if I use the desktop, it's very different. The environment should be very different, but like those kind of like a simplified website kind of Force the same design, even though they enter the same website, um, the website using different tools. So I try to like criticize those concepts of like keeping the same design and keeping the same brand. So these are the website that I uh, created to criticize those uh, responsive web design concept. Um, this is archive on this Taipo Janchi website. Here you can see. I kind of like collected though, I made at the very beginning, I made one website, which looks like this one. This was the very starting, uh, this was the very beginning of the website. And I tried to like collect different um, responsive rules um, that developers um, tend to use and kind of like collected each of those uh, web designs, responsive rules in small squares. 
So in certain ratio, it looks like a general website, but if you just change the screen ratio, then it looks like a little scattered um, unreadable websites. There's a beautiful connection, if I may um, insert something, Ivan. Mm -hmm. With our last two talks, where the loop was kind of a repeating pattern that was discussed. First, Nicolas, Nicolas Bourriot and then Susan Kennedy. And in a way, if I understood you right, this kind of, you want to break the loop of this automatic repetition, repetitive actions when using the internet in order mm -hmm. to create an, a, more of an awareness of, of the content. So it's an yeah. attempt to break this loop of kind of always doing the same thing in, on these kind of user-friendly um, templates. Is this correct, the interpretation? Yes, correct. Um, I think it's, if I like, at the, po at the point that I started to understand how the web development work and how the technology works, I started to really realize that those technologies are um, goes to the direction that have its own purpose. It's not for the people, for the people, but like it's a technology that they want to develop as far as possible. It's not for the people. So like it's not um, drive people in a good direction, if that makes sense. Mm. So well, I think the direction, the direction of uniformity, you mean? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's kind of like too much business side stuff and like it's not for the user and it's not take care of how user in, uh, user environment or the information that people receive when they're using website, for example, or any any other technologies out there. And I think like um, as a person who kind of like little more have have little more understanding of the technology, kind of like try to do this project to like show that there should be, we should aware before we are using the technology and we should understand how it works before we just accept the technology that developers develop. You, you are, so to speak, you're the glitch in the matrix. Yeah, maybe, <laughs> but like, yeah, I think that's something that actually really scares me at the same time as a person who are, who is living in this um, environment that we move to this virtual environment, I think we should aware more before we just jump into this virtual or web design field. So yeah, those are the uh, experiments that I did as a, under the theme of anti-user friendly. And so as I mentioned, what I wanna do is that now is the technology goes like it looks like the development of technology looks like this way. There's like a one linear line that goes to like goes to the top like forever, like somewhere that developers try to achieve. And I trying to like make some other directions using the same technology instead of like developing technology further and further. I try to like think about the diff different way of using this technology and different, um, trying to like bring different cultures or, or bring different perspective when you're dealing with the technology. And then while I'm keep working on this anti-user friendly theme, I started to think that maybe we, we should more focus on the content in the website rather than the user and the ease of use. So like, as I as I roughly mentioned at the very beginning, I my background is graphic design and I deal with lots of content when I'm designing the website, uh, designing the books or posters. And when we think about like a books or posters, we very much focus on the, like what kind of content go into this book and how can we show these contents in these um, formats. But when we are dealing with the website, we, developers are very much focused on the uh, user rather than the content that it contains. So I think that maybe I should bring back those notion of the content when we are designing the website and I need to like develop the website that is more have this architecture or the structure that comes from the content rather than the users. So these are the archive of the website that I um, built so far that came from the content or structure, I'll say. 
For example, like this one is the website for Isa Rubino Vera Plot's typography summer school. And it's an archive of the student artwork um, that, who took this summer school for 10 years. And I, instead of like using the template based website, I use this uh, huge 3D cylinder on the landing page to show the content structure that it contains. Um, which is actually working here. So like, and if I click one of these, I should be able to go to the Google, um, yeah, Google PDF. So then user can actually read the contents or the PDF of the student output. Or this is the website that it's about like it's for the exhibition called Open Recent Graphic Design, which is the uh, exhibition that uh, like happens every year. Um, it, this exhibition focuses on the capturing the recent graphic design scene and activities in South, South Korea. So I made a website for this exhibition and I made this website also like I try to like bring this vibe of like capturing with some scene of the graphic design. So I made this website which captures itself every three seconds and ar archive it on the right side of the website. So on the left side, you can scroll the website and see the content as a general website, but it captures every three seconds, um, captures itself, itself every three seconds. So on the right side, you can see the captured image of the website. And this one is also on Chrome. This is a website for a uh, called Digital Canal, which is the archive website of the uh, experiments of network, net art and web digital art from 1960 to 2000. And this website um, contains two different information. Um, this is um the the basic purpose of this website is archiving the um artists from 1960 to 2000. So if you enter this website, you can see the list of the thumbnails of the artwork, and you can click one of them and see the details of the artist and the uh, artwork here. But at the same time, this website contains the behind story of this archive and the curation. Um, so like I made this website rotatable so at the at, when user enter the front side of the website, they can see the archive of the artist, but they can still rotate the website and see the backstory of this curation and the archive, and they can still click it and read the uh, essays from the curators. And what made you think content wise of kind of how, how did you how did you come up with these kind of ideas that, that are by the way very architectural no it's interesting that your your references have have a architectural or spatial quality so you're yeah, visualizing like, the, the internet again yeah yeah like i think i think the internet is more like a space um rather than uh, the flat screen and i try to like bring the vibe of the space and the arch content architecture whenever i'm designing the website and also i'm a big fan of architecture as well that brings this vibe so like when i first um received this um um request from the client they talked about like there should be two different information um this is basically for the archiving of the graphic de um, uh, digital design uh, scene but also they wanted to show the curation of this um archive but all, but they think that this curation should be go like behind because hidden behind because and let the user first see the archive uh, of the artist. So like that was that was the, um, uh, the uh, that was uh, kind of like the impression that I have. Like I should make this website um, front side and the back side and hide the back side information behind the website.
And if I go to the sitemap of the website, you can see the whole structure of this website, the front side and the back side of this website. Yeah, kind of like that. Um, I'm gonna skip some of this on websites, but as you mentioned, all, most of these have this um, architecture format that comes from the content, not from the user experience or ease of use. Open wire. It's, a, um, it's more like a generated website. It reconstructs itself whenever a user enters the website and navigate the website. So every cell, every shape of these cells um, randomly generated whenever a user enters the site. So like the concept of this website is that like even though we enter the same websites twice or several times, um, the shape of the website looks uh, different because it uh, randomly generates itself. And what's the backdrop here for this one? Sorry? Um, the title is is, a, is, is a, a one of a movie, no? Um, a, a famous yes. movie by Rainer Werner Fassbinder. But mm -hmm. this was an exhibition or what's the what's the content uh, here? Yeah, it was an exhibition um, from Rhizom, which is the old net art archiving. Um, um, and like they do a lot of things, curating the net art archive and make this sort of like an exhibition and they do lots of different things. But yeah, this is the website for the exhibition called World on a Wire. And they kind of like, Rhizome is the place that they first They changed their logo, of, but very big, at the very beginning, they created the generative logo. So like this was this like a generated concept comes from there because um, they wanted to bring back those five of like a generativeness um, at the very beginning when the web web or net are created. Amazing. And this is the website for, this is a website called Future School Virtual Tour. This is a website for the Venice Viennial, Venice Architecture Viennial on Korean Pavilion. So like Korean, Venice Architecture Viennial, Korean Pavilion bring that concept of the of virtual school or the future school, the future of what, what could we think of what what can be the future of the school and they did like a lot of um they like invited lots of art artists out there um and created um lots of experiments um regarding the future the shape of the school in the future and i created this website uh, which is, I thought like this could be like a shape of the future school um, because the concept of this website brings the, um, the concept of this website is creating the 3D space using the, um, using this spreadsheet as a back, um, database. So this is the 3D space that uses 3D uh, spreadsheet as a database. So this is the basic um, spreadsheet that, um, this website brings the um, this web, oh, sorry this website brings the content from this spreadsheet here. So the concept of this website is that the school or the classroom should be um, should be the place that anyone can go and change the space because like the classroom if you think about the classroom it's a space that student can change and can create um, by their own um, vibe. So like each classroom have different. Um, characteristic and like have different um culture and like um, decoration for example um because the students are different so i wanted to bring that vibe um in this uh, 3d website that connect by connecting this um 3d website using this uh, google spreadsheet which is basically a platform that anyone can go and change the content 
So like that was a trial to like connect the Google spreadsheet as a database and create a 3D space that is changeable. Um, rather than using the 3D space, as you can see these days, all the 3D space are um, already created, already finished by the developers and users are just the user who are using the ready-made um, space, which is cannot be a, like, for example, cannot be a classroom. Mm. No, sorry. So yeah, like again, another example of creating a website coming from the content structure. So those are the trials. So those are the kind of like a second trial for me to create experimental websites. Uh, starting from the anti-user friendly, I need to I try to create something more practical and something more uh, content focused. So I started to make this um, content focused architecture websites. Then I I kind of like as you mentioned, I tried I make a website that is more like a space based and architecture based website because I as I mentioned I I think that web is a more like a space rather than like a flat screen, so it's more like a space. And if I think of web, like the space in the web is more like a space than the web. What we see on the web browser or the screen should be like an entrance to the space. So like the actual space is the space. And the virtual space is the space as well too. Then what should what browser need to be be is more like an entrance between two different spaces, if that makes sense. So that was like a notion that I realization that I had um, when I'm dealing with the interaction between user and the device, which is the screen and the web space. So I started to make like a um, use the device as an entrance and trying to change the user um, user interaction between device and the screen and the users. So I I did like a bunch of experiments to change the user interaction between the device and the touch uh, fingers or the um, tools web tools. These are now three interconnected phones or four. Sorry? So these phones are all interconnected now. Yeah, it's all interconnected. So not only just designing the website inside the screen, I also like trying to change the interaction between user and the devices. And for example, this one is called the way we touch each other in 2020. And as you can see, when user touches one screen using their own device, um, the virtual finger shows to the other user's um, device so then they can touch each other using screen um, and their finger. For not only the touch device, but also just the keyboard. And I was very much fascinated um, creating like a, something called web toy or web tool. Cause like I wanted to like criticize the concept of the website should be approachable worldwide. And like when we are dealing with these websites, we think that web, web kind of like connects the people around the world, but which is not true. Like internet is not for the people around the world. And I wanted to like criticize the concept is 
of like a web as an utopia that um, everyone can join and like meet each other internationally. So I wanted to like intentionally limit the user who can use this website by creating like a web toy. So like only those users who have this web toy can access the website and use the website. And those who don't have this tool are not able to use this website. So I kind of like trying to change the concept of um, web approach, approachable website and intentionally limit the user by making physical tools and toys. It feels almost, can I insert something again and ask? I'm, I'm sure, making sure. connections now with last week's talk. It, it seems like you want to like deliberately estrange the viewer, like confused, no? disrupt the viewer with your works. And mm -hmm. in a way, that's what um, Susan Susanna Kennedy oh. also talked about last week, that with her theater place, the way she kind of puts the stage on or masks for the people or playback voices is, is, is this moment of um, estrangement no? that, that's, that's happening that kind of mm -hmm. however, shocks you into new form of awareness. And actually, that's a classical theatrical device in German, it's called Verfremdungs effect or distancing effect or estrangement effect in theater by, by the German playwright um, Bertolt Brecht. But it's by kind of um, almost shocking the audience into awareness by estranging the situation, that they feel distant to the situation. But so, in a way, you're applying this dramaturgical uh, method uh, um, in your way to websites. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, I think like somehow like criticism is the main theme that I whenever I work on the website, it's not for it's not more like a web fully functioning website is one thing that I am focusing on. But like furthermore, I am like trying to make I am trying to like broaden the perspective when user is dealing with the website or using these devices and like let them think twice before they actually jump into this technology. So like putting them in a weird space and putting them in a different space when they are dealing with this technology is very important whenever I'm, I design these tools. So like, like breaking the, like a frame of the web design and the devices. And then I tried to make a website. I wanted to like break the frame that developers develop the website and users are there, are there who are using, just using these uh, devices, just using this website. So I wanted to like break that frame of like a default gap between developer and users. And then try to make like a website that is like a co-creative, co um, everyone can join and build a website at the same time when they are dealing with the, when they are using the website. So like similar to the previous example that I showed, I made a website that is connected to the Google spreadsheet because like I love the concept that Google spreadsheet is something that everyone can join and change the content. So I made a workshop with INTL, uh, which is the, um, um, Graphic Design Festival uh, running on um, um, people that is based in Europe, um, based in UK. And I created this website that is connected to the Google Spreadsheet um, and generate the 3D space using Google Spreadsheet as a database. And everyone who joined this workshop uh, entered this Google Spreadsheet and created their own, um, decorated their own Google Spreadsheet. And what we saw before was yeah. the specialization, the three-dimensional specialization of this spreadsheet that we're looking at. Yeah. So mm -hmm. these are the spreadsheet that um, people participants on um, decorated by their own, and this is the rendered uh, 3D space from those um, Google spreadsheet. Let me show the video. Just okay. So basically the concept of this uh, workshop is that we are um, developer at the same time user of this website or the web space.
So again, this is from more like a, to criticize the um, gap between user and the developer. And as as a person who are using this virtual space, we need to have the right to change and decorate our own space. As we are um, decorating our own physical space in a real life. And all, uh, and the, uh, oh, let me turn off the loading of the site. And the other things are more like uh, experimental. I try to like um, break the format that website should be, should go under the screen and sh it should be very much framed. So I'm trying to like change the concept of that. So I sometimes create, create like this sort of like a physical uh, installation as well. Um, this one, this art one, artwork on the center is called web surfing. And as you can see, the website are surfing on the on water. And this one, which is the small installation around that web surfing is called web ring, which is the, um, the concept at the very beginning when we have this internet, there is like a um, concept of the web ring that connects the um, websites in a ring form. So I wanted to like physically visualize this web, web ring structure in a physical space. So I did like a web this sort of like an installation as a form of the performance. Yeah, I think that those are basically most, almost everything that I have tried. I tried to make like a posters as well too. So I'm trying to like change the concept of web design or the template side website and trying to like experiment as far as possible to change the concept and like again putting user in a weird space to uh, motivate them to rethink about the technology and tools and the web space when they are using when they are using as a user of the website yes yeah, incredible i also i'm really fascinated with the, the architectural connection that you're um, repeatedly making in, in your work, or basically asking, in a way you could say that you're asking, what is the space of the internet with all of your works? No, it's a very general question. Um, mm -hmm. And um, uh, can I ask a more, um, uh, yeah, kind of a, a basic question? I mean, this, this seems, um, this looks amazing now, but this, there must be, there's such a level of complexity behind it, no? Just from the programming part. But how do you, and I imagine it very straining and time consuming, what's, what's your procedure like? What's your working like? So how do you, how do you start with the project? What are the steps? Um, I, I first um, communicate a lot with my, I, most of my project is I have clients and I work with my clients. So it's more like a not, not like a personal artwork, but more like a client attached uh, graphic um, client job. So I first, whenever I have like a client job, I first talk about the content, what kind of content should we go under this website. And I start to make so this sort of like architecture or structure from the content structure. Um, and then I just build a website. Uh, what I want to say whenever I develop the website is that I try to create website from the very scratch. So I try to use the last library, library as possible and trying to build a website by my own and write the code uh, line by line by myself. And I found that like frees me from those like a templates and make more diverse websites. And now I feel like that is much easier for me rather than using those uh, ready-made um, libraries that someone else already developed. So like, I don't know if that answered the question, but like, I try to like um, start from the content structure and just uh, visualize it um, using that, um, um, using code. I don't really do any uh, extra sketch. I just start jumping to the code and kind of like create the code um, by the uh, like a rough image that I have in my brain. So I use uh, like a code as a brush or the 
tool for the sketch. And um, I don't know if you are, um, still show will show more um, um, uh, images now. Otherwise, we, we can maybe jump back to the normal screen and actually mm -hmm. immediately um, go into um, coding. I mean, again, because for most of us here probably listening to you, um, um, we're not familiar with coding or programming, except for that, I don't know, I guess it describes the process of, of assigning a code to something or um, for classification or identification. But um, could, could you, as is too much, explain the process of, of um, of coding um, or kind of kind of wiring these computer programs, um, or actually in your case of creative co coding in in simple terms, to, like in layman terms. Mm. I don't know. I I think I kind of like I think that coding is more like a mathematic. It's more like a simple mathematic and like. I just write the function there and then it generate the image. And I kind of like, I kind of feel like creating this website is more like um, um, collaborate with my computer and myself. So I just write the code and uh, see what a computer generate from the code, computer generate visuals from the code. So like computer coding as it's more like a language um, that language that I use to communicate with the computer. So if I write something um, in a written form, then computer understand it and like renders it visually on the web browser. That... Feel, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, um, I feel that there's still like a general illiteracy um, when it comes to coding and programming um, today. No, whilst. Um, also considering the enormous influence that computer programs and algorithms have on our daily lives, um, it should actually become something um, like a basic vocabulary, like reading and writing and coding today. Um, mm -hmm. Yet it's not, no? Um, but it seems almost a, a matter of like almost democratic necessity that we know these tools otherwise as you said before, mm -hmm. you knowing the technology now a bit better, you 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 see patterns or these uniform templates, and um, yeah, mm -hmm. I, I, I wonder how um, how you what do you think about that? This kind of I still feel an illiteracy. I'm I'm almost sure that most of us listening today um, are not familiar with coding. Um, it was interesting for me as well. Like I, my background is graphic design as well too. So I learned code after I um, finished my you know, graphic design background after my college. And one of my developer friends told me that no one really understand how it works because um, like there are so many people involved in this web code. So like there are layers and layers on the top of the layer. So in the end, no one really understand how it works because like this is like a, like a massive uh, collaborate work of the developers. And she thinks that it's really problematic because like no one really know how to like control this in the end. So that is partially why I'm trying to make the code like the final output looks a bit um um complicated, but my code is kind of like relatively very simple. And as I mentioned, I try to like write code at the very scratch by my own line by line. Cause like I think um as it's more like a language, um, and I need to like use the language, um use only those languages that I fully understand. And I need to like fully control all these languages that I am using rather than using the libraries or ready-made code, which is something that I don't really fully understand. For example, um, those cloud system or the um, AWS or those like a lot, there are lots of technologies that already developed and there are there will be like far more technologies um, tomorrow and the day after tomorrow, it's developing so fast. And like, it's very easy to like, feel like I need to follow this um, um, wave of the technology and use those um, ready-made tools um, rather than like fully understand, before fully understanding them. And I kind of like feel like that is not um, the thing that we need to follow in the end. 
we we still need to like think of it as a language and like use the language when we are fully understand all the details of these languages. And that's what I'm trying to like keep um, whenever I'm developing the website. I'm trying to like make everything controllable and make things simple and like obvious and one-on-one -on -one, um, relationship between the code and the uh, final output, which is the website. But it's, um, I mean, to me, it's fascinating to understand now that um, it is a, another language that you're speaking. It's not like you start scratching or you're making notes, but you directly start programming as if I, like I do, I don't know, sketches or something like that. Um, mm -hmm. But it's, it's a, you're fluent in the, in, in the language. And, and I think that's, um, it will be necessary for future generation to kind of have the fluidity um, with, with this new language or basic vocabulary as well. But um, I mean, I think you're born in 1995, am I correct? Yeah. So you, you basically grew, grew up with the internet from day one in the country mm -hmm. with the fastest internet in the world, in, in Korea, I think it is, no? So, right. um, and you said you studied first graphic design and programming came later, but like what got you interested in programming and coding in the first place? As a, was there some like Eureka moment that got you started with it? It was really fascinating that internet developed so fast. And like, as you mentioned, I was born in 1995 after all those net art or the aggressive website are all over. And I didn't really know like there is like a experimental website back in 90s. And I just saw like a lot of template based website and as a graphic designer, sorry. As a graphic designer, I just kind of felt like this template-based website is a bit weird, right? So I just trying to change it and trying to like make some sort of like an experiment. And then I realized that there has been lots of experiments back there. And that was like a trigger for me that I need to like jump into this field and actually learn the code to create what they have been created, but what we lost after this, like a Google search engines. Mm -hmm. So that was like a trigger for me to like learn code and um, make something aggressive and push it further and further. And what do you believe, like what unique possibilities are inherent to, to the web as a medium compared to, let's say more classical or traditional media? Yeah, I think that is partially, I was affected by the environment um, in Korea. Like, like if I go to Europe, for example, there are like, a, like a places that you can put the posters. But in Korea, there are not so many places that people use the um, printed poster, for example. We have more like a media artwork or like um, um, screens out there that you can see the moving videos and images. So like, we kind of like, because of the environment, we were more fascinated in making GIFs or moving images of our advertisements. And, and so like, like, because of that, I wanted to make something that is used on the street. And for me, that wasn't a poster, but it was more like moving image or the media art or things like that. So I think that um, at the very beginning, I started as a poster or um, book design, but and the, in the end, um, because I was surrounded by those environments, I started to make like uh, animations and uh, websites for more like um, moving or generative stuff. And you just mentioned Korea and also Europe, the difference with the usage of, of public space of posters. And I think you also um, studied or you lived in New York for quite a while. So, mm -hmm. um, I mean, I imagine also, I mean, in all of our practices, but in particular in your field, um, um, the, like digital technologies and the internet have completely changed the way we work, no? So you don't have to be based in a certain location, but you're actually quite fluent in that sense. Um, and the, the community is spread around the world. So how far did um, um, this in, in kind of influence your practice? You growing up in South Korea, working with clients in Europe, traveling through Europe, um, working in the States, living in New York. Yeah. How, how did, did this, what did you learn? Or how did you develop your craft through that? 
Um, I think at the very first time when I was in New York and I learned the code there, I realized the way people deal with code is very different based on the culture and based on like what language they are using. But because, for example, like coding is very much based on English, right? So the Korean is using first learning English first and then learn code, like computer language as a um, so there are like a layers when they are dealing with the computer language, whereas in New York, they are using their own language when they are developing the code. And like, so though there is like a technology that is approachable from the people around the world, but like the way they are dealing with this technology is very different based on the culture. So like Americans trying to like change the web environment um, by changing this cloud system or changing um, um, a huge corporation based um, development environment. Whereas um, in Korea, I think that there are lots of people who are using this as a media art and create like a generative visual art, visual focused art. So like, I don't know. It was interesting for me by traveling different countries and living different countries and talk with people who are in the tech, tech field. Um, the way they think um, technology is very different based on the culture. And how did this affect um, your own way of doing things? Um, so that is why I ended up like creating like aggressive a website that is visually complicated but in uh some parts uh criticize this web field because like i partially affected this new york um vibe of criticizing huge um tech uh, field but at the same time trying to create some generative and visually experimental uh, artwork um that is coming from um europe and korea and um, another question that comes to mind is now um, you said that you do everything yourself, no, like from the design to the coding, you immediately start with it. So it's a very like your uh, one unit process. Mm -hmm. but then, um, you showed um, the, the one of the first websites you showed was for the graphic designs, uh, I think, workshop. Um, mm -hmm. so, and I understand that you do workshops as well, correct? Yeah. Right. How, how do you like? How do you do? How do you work then with a bigger group, let's say, of students or participants? Um, being being so used to work on your own, uh, obviously in dialogue with the, the respective clients, but um, yeah. What's um, your biggest learnings there? Uh, I think the the workshop basically is i i focus very much on how to uh, do the workshop to the people who are not familiar with code and how to let them know that they can control the code and this is just a simple language rather than like unapproachable technology and I think it was easier for me because my background is graphic design, so I, I have that perspective and I have I knew that I learned the code by my own after that. So I like for me, it was surprising once you start to understand how the code works, it's really easy to like go further and make something uh, experimental and generative. So like those kind of steps that I um, uh, followed so far when why I'm trying to learn code by my own um, affected me a lot when I'm do running the workshop to the people who are known developers to understand and to like give them like a very scratch that very first step to jump into this code field. Mm. Um, speaking of the users, um, I, I was curious uh, to know all of you listening that you kind of start to get ready also for questions for Ivan. But to kind of warm up, could you guys all just write like what you guys are studying into the chat to kind of provide us a bit with an overview? Like imagine we would be a workshop that you're doing and what kind of fine art, architecture, dance, Gesellschaft und Wirtschaftskommunikation, fine arts, piano, architecture, visual communication, choreography.
architecture and visual communication, fine arts are coming up. So we see we have a kind of a rather broad spectrum. And um, who of you now listening is already familiar with coding or programming? Like a thumbs up is fine or, a, you know, some kind of a sign. It's four. Any more? See, so we are, we have like 62 people in the group right now, and it's four to five that are familiar with that. Um, so a few, maybe a handful more. And I think that's, um, for me, kind of um, in the preparation also for our talk, it was, and now hearing you speak about this, it's actually quite a mind-opening moment of understanding that the internet, that I have such an uncritical way of using the internet and also of the spaces of the internet and that they're indeed so uniform. And what you're doing is um, basically um, yeah, fighting for a playful and more open spatial understanding of the internet that um, yeah, fights for non-uniformity in a way, no? And, and diversity and heterogeneity and like ambivalence and contradiction. And this is in a way what the whole lecture series has been about from very different angles and perspectives and disciplines. Um, but it's another aha moment of looking at something differently um, afterwards. So um, thanks for all the kind of notes here. Do, do you guys um, have a question for um, for, um, for for Yuan? And don't don't be shy. No, last time we had such good questions coming up at the very end when the when you already turned off the cameras. I have a question. Hi. Hello. Thanks for this uh, beautiful uh, presentation. Uh, it goes uh, to uh, into a direction that uh, a question that I've already asked uh, to another um, um, uh, person that was here in in the juxtaposition pr presentation. Because one one reason for me that I'm like oh, I'm not so into coding is because it's another thing where you need to sit in front of the computer for a long time, you know. Where I'm thinking, but why is this still connected? Because this doesn't need to be connected. Uh, the technology is probably there that you can code by walking through the room or dancing. Uh, why isn't this already out there that we can then people with uh, who come, for instance, from dance or performance or more into body movement? Why isn't it possible yet for them to do this? Um, because wouldn't it be interesting to have all those perspectives uh, in, and then what kind of programs would come out, you know? Uh, or how, I would love to code by walking through the forest. I would love to code, you know? Uh, or do you know about some uh, initiatives that are going in this direction? Um, not really. Um, I think partially because but like for me, it's really interesting for me as well too. Like for example, like there are so many possibilities when you're dealing with the website, for example, but there are not so many people who are doing that. Because as I mentioned, like when we are dealing with the technology, we tend to like follow the one direction and like move further rather than making something diverse. And like, I still feel like a bit lonely here, like because there are not so many people who are doing experimental websites. And like, obviously there should be some tech technical like barriers um in order to develop those kind of like an environment or um coding environment for example but at the same time i think there are not so many people who are trying to like change or make something different and diverse um yeah so maybe that's why yeah, thank you for the question Philippe, and thanks for breaking the ice another question from you guys Yes, we, I think we have two. We have Justus and Rita. So uh, Rita first. Yeah, I was just like, I know just like very, very simple basics of, of some coding that I have 
developed some websites, but basically using the templates, or then I have been uh, using Arduino, for instance, uh, the robotics for, for, I mean, that's what I'm looking into now, basically. Uh, but I was just curious, like, you said that you're self-taught in coding, that how, because, uh, like, how did you start, or like, like, um, was it a certain language that you then decided to uh, learn, or how, how basically you decided to do it because it's it's kind of i feel like it's super easy to or like it seems very easy but then then it's very dependent kind of at least the tutorials are kind of very dependent on the templates or the already made stuff so i'm very curious about the experimental way of mm -hmm. using it um, so I, the, every code that, every website that I developed uses JavaScript, HTML, CSS as a basic language. I sometimes use like an, um, server-side code, server-side code, um, but like basically most of them are just the simple HTML, CSS, JavaScript websites. And, um, yeah, like I try to like keep it simple as you mentioned I try to keep it um control like changeable using JavaScript and I still like think that those features coming from the mathematics and JavaScript can be controllable using on mathematics and geography on on like change so like those features comes from the um, um calculations and the mathematics so like these are all of these are like, just the JavaScript, um, HTML, CSS, and I am still like love using um, simple code rather than like trying to learn different code languages. Does yeah, that answer cool. the question. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> thank you for the question, um, Justus. Uh, yes, uh, thank you very much for your talk. I have two basic questions. I think right, they're. Uh, rather vague than, than direct. Uh, one was since uh, the usage of uh, interfaces um, is also playing like a significant role in data security. I would just love to get a take uh, from you on that. And the other one would be if, uh, since you talk about uh, coding as this uh, language also as a personal way of sketching, um, if you, what is like maybe a, a nice understanding way to uh, kind of see differences in uh, codes that have been made for exactly these user-friendly uh, interfaces that you describe? Is there is there a code difference that you could uh, I don't know elaborate for for us me as a non-coder? Mm. So for the first question, I am, as I mentioned, I am still like trying to like um, develop it further and still in the process of learning at the same time and data security for the um, security issue is the, something that I also am um, trying to develop as well too. So like those are the things that I found um, tricky as a um, independent developer to keep my website secure and keep my website um, like in a database secure um, and like still approachable to the users. So those are the things that I think is a problem when I'm making websites as well too. Um, and I'm try trying to like figure out how to solve those issues. So yes, I have those first problem right now and I'm starting to like figure out how can I make this website as secure as possible, um, but still keep it uh, developed independently. And I was in the school called Credit Computation in New York. That, that was a place that I learned code at the very beginning. And there was there was a teacher named Jack Lieberman, Lieberman who is a teacher in MIT Media Lab as well too. Um, let me just share my screen because um, and he hosts lots of um, 
code based um, generative arts in his Instagram. And he's the one who um, said that he's the one who um, said that he, like, if I start um, sketching using code, then like something unexpected could happen because like an, it's a collaborative work between me and my computer. And it's like um, a visual generated from compute, uh, visuals generated from numbers and um, mathematics. So like there are some part that is unexpected if I go further and further using numbers and using computer language as a sketching tool. And that was why, like at the very beginning when I'm learning code, it was really hard for me to use it as a, a sketching tool. So I um, depend on the uh, Adobe tools to like first make a sketch and like visualize it using code. Um, but like at one point, um when i started to feel like um using computer code is like um much easier for me because like i was much more familiar as i developing further and further i started to use it as a sketching tool because i kind of like i was fascinated um in this um generativeness um if i use the computer language as a sketching tool so that's why i'm trying to like um like make like a rough visualization of the website at the very beginning when I'm um trying to make a website, but trying to like keep it free um so then the computer can generate the visuals um and keep it like uh, unexpected instead of like making static visuals using um for example like an Adobe Illustrator. Hmm. Yeah. Thank you for your question, uh, Yusuf. Thanks for the answer. And another question from you guys? Yes. Hi, Katrin. You can't hear me. Now you can hear me. <laughs> um, I was wondering how you choose between your um, work how do you say proposals? Because um, I also work at a graphic design studio and I know how hard it is to find a web developer that is also a graphic designer or who has this eye and who, who can obviously um, design as well. And I think even to find very good programmers is quite hard, but even when you're a really good graphic designer as yeah as you are <laughs> it's funny that i say that but yeah um how how do you choose because i i'm sure that you get a lot of um proposals and i want to know how you choose between them so um it's for me it's like it's kind of like a little bit limited for me as an independent developer as you mentioned like there are like security issues and some part that i can i am not able to deal as an independent developer so if i have like a proposal some of those works that are too massive for me to develop um i try to not um receive those kind of like um, proposals because like i am not in, able to handle those websites um web is like make developing the finalized website is one thing but like web is like a more like a fluid um ever-changing environment so there should be someone who are like managing this website because like even though the website is completed at the very end um because the environment is keep changing someone need to like control uh, keep on uh, develop the website so like those are the limitations that i have as an independent um because like I am not, my time is limited and I am not able to like manage all the website that I have developed. So I try to like find the find the opportunity that is more like a short term website and have um an opportunity to have more experimental, even though it's not a hundred percent approachable for the people around the world. And those are the things that I take care of. and um in general like websites are like there are 
like not that much uh, clients who are looking for very experimental websites. So like, um, so like some parts I need to think about the user and uh, how we deal with the user and user experience um, is one thing that I communicate a lot before I finally receive the proposal. Um, Cause I, I try to make an experimental website, but like that can be not a hundred percent user approachable. Then what should be the pri priority when we are uh, making websites? Um, it's something that I try to like communicate a lot with my clients. Um, yeah, I think if I take care of like all those limitation in the end, I don't really have like a lot of things that I can do and I don't have like the tons of proposal that I can choose. So like those are the work that I can do and that I think that is for me. Um, and those, there are some other works that is for the like uh, corporations or large um, group of um, developers, for example. Thank you for your question, Kathleen. So I'd say we have time for one more question. There's one in the chat. Um, Antonia is asking, if coding is a language, do you sometimes dream? Oh, that's a nice one. If coding is a language, do you sometimes dream or think in coding? Does this happen? Is this possible? This is a nice question. Thank you, Antonia. I'm curious. That's really poetic question as well. Like there are a lot of people who use code like code is a language and there are lots of people who as an artwork um, create a poem using code. And as I mentioned, the school that I was in is called School for Poetic Computation. And there are lots of people who like make a poem using um, code language. Uh, I am not, I don't really dream um, in code, but like I sometimes think in code and I think, um, Coding is like a unique language for like in Korean, it has like a unique beauty. And if I think like, if I started to think the way that code is constructed, the grammar of the code, for example, um, then I started to think that, I think that I started to find some different aesthetics there, if that makes sense. So yeah, coding is the language and if I, like it really changed my perspective once I understand that the code is the language and I need to deal with it as a language rather than like a technology or something that I need to learn to like make a website. And I'm wondering now, I have a question now for you. You just mentioned Jack Lieberman, but um, so apart from, like, apart from coding or within coding, like like what are your like influences like what are you inspired by when you do your work no but what, what, what do you consider as your biggest inspiration and influences um i think it's 90s web net art and web art um movement in 90s back in time um there has been there are a lot of people who use it code as a language at that time and there are a lot of there has been a lot of people who trying to like experiment using this new like internet environment. And that was like a main inspiration for me as a person who born after those movements um, to see how the enthusiasm and how those people trying to experiment using the technology was very inspiring um, for me all the time. Mm. And then um, coming to our final question, that's always the same. Oh, no, wait, there's one more coming in. Okay. This is the last one I'm taking in, by the way. No more. No, there's, there's even, okay, okay, now it's going on. Okay. So before my final <laughs> question, sorry, Anika is asking, do you think that it is a personality trait that one just needs to uh, be able to learn something by themselves? I imagine there are loads of people that start learning coding and then stopped after a while. Or is it rather a question of really wanting it or of self-discipline? So do you have to be born to be a coder or is it a question of like, you know, really wanting it in self-discipline? Is it nature or nurture? Uh, I don't know. Like, I think that there are people who feel like it's easier for them to learn code because of their um, own personality or 
um, background, I guess. Like, for example, there are people who kind of feel like mathematics is easier for them, and some people like the poems or the um, the mother part of the knowledge is easier for them. So, like, depending on the personality and personal background, there should be someone who are easier, who feel like easier to learn code. And for me, it was kind of like relatively easier for me to learn code and computer language is not that much complicated. So I learned it very fast as well. So yeah, I I don't know, like it really, dep like everything is depending on like personal background and personal knowledge. And I can't say like, um, this is only for limited amount of people. Those are the born to be developers and then the others are not able to learn code at all. But obviously there should be someone who kind of feel like it's easier for them to learn. Um, and for some others are not, um, are maybe feel a little more complicated to learn code and things like that. Okay, and then so the, the last one here before my final question is from Fred, and he's saying, "Dear Yevon, I'm wondering who's I'm wondering who's visiting your websites. It seems that you're touching a very specific and small public, since your websites are complex and somehow overwhelming. Would you be interested in creating, following your style, a website for a wide range of people, like the website for the National Train Company, which everyone needs to use, also elder ones who often struggle with computers." Uh, yeah, like, I think so far I am more fascinated in making like more aggressive website, which in the end uh, limit the user who can access this website. For example, elder, elder, like older people found it hard um, to use this website. And if I start to de design the website for all the people out there, I ended up making the more like an easier and familiar website, which is like a template based website in the end. And I tried to like, trying to change the environment. And so like, because of that, I, my website ended up like for the limited amount of users and for the limited amount of people who can understand this website. Um, so like for right now, I am more, interested in making aggressive website that rather than like website for a larger group of people or larger group of futures. Mm -hmm. But um, those are the things that I am keep thinking and keep considering. Um, how can I make a website not only for only as a performance or only for the limited amount of future or how can I make this like an aggressive or experimental website as a more like a culture that is approachable for large amount of people, but at the same time um, is experimental and is not following the templates. Okay. So that's like a final hope for me. So then the final question for you is, um... As I said, we, we saw there's a very um, mixed bag here of students with very many different backgrounds. And the last question we ask, ask every speaker is what piece of advice could you give all the becoming artists, designers, architects, dancers, piano players, etc., listening to us today? Um, understand your own perspective and express it. Because like, like for me at the very beginning when I trying to learn on uh, this technology. Th these are more like, especially web technology is kind of com coming from uh, Western culture. And I kind of, at the very beginning, I kind of like overwhelmed and try to follow those cultures that are not for me. And I ended up creating something different because I think that like being myself using this coding language is very important. And that kind of ended up creating something unique. So yeah, not follow the general like flow and kind of like bring something that you already have and connect those um, thing to what you are learning out there and create something unique in the end. Thank sense. you, Yvonne. For me, it was um, a mind opening uh, conversation with you today. Um, it was fascinating to see you use code really as your 
tool for artistic expression, you know, just like the dancer uses the body or the painter the brush or the the poet the language or the words and um, really understand the code as an uh, a coding as a contemporary artistic practice. Also, thank you for making uh, me more aware of, kind of the uniformity of the web and also the need for um, somewhat breaking with this loop of, as you call it, repetitive automatic action. And yeah, this almost theatrical device of this deliberate estrangement to create more of a content awareness. Um, so thank you so much for that. It's uh, It's been um, amazing. Um, I learned a lot. Um, I hope all of you guys too. So let's give an online applause to Yevan here right now. It's almost four o'clock in the morning in Korea. So this is really, I mean, she's really dedicated here, guys. Yeah, We're having it easy. Uh, thank you very, very much. It was really, really great. Um, uh, I hope um, we meet in person one day in Europe or in Korea. Um, there's a lot of applause coming here from the students. Um, thank you so much again. Um, we'll keep in touch um, for all of you. Thank you for, for being with us. This was the... Uh, the yeah second to last session um, next week there will be Estonian installation artist Katja Novitskova as, as the final lecture also going to be amazing so for now goodbye stay safe stay, uh, take care and see you next week and Yevan thank you very much again thank you so much for having me in the conversation thank you bye bye, bye. Good, good luck